let's start first off with uh, the forecast that we have at the moment. Bear in mind, these are projected seats. Uh, there is a margin of error with these. This is from election forecast. But let's take these numbers as read, Akash, for a mm -hmm. moment. Let's say these were accurate. Who gets the first chance at forming a government if that was the state of play? Well, there's no formal rules, actually, about who gets the first opportunity to try and put together a, a coalition or some other arrangement with other parties. Anyone can negotiate with anyone else. Um, and as we saw in 2010, that might mean that we have two sets of parallel negotiations going on at the same time. Um, what would be the case, though, is as the incumbent government, uh, David Cameron would remain uh, in Downing Street um, as Prime Minister, and ministers from the Conservative and, and Liberal Democrat parties would remain in their departments during this period as a, as a sort of caretaker government, um, so able to take decisions if there's a crisis or something, um, but really just waiting until it's clear who is actually able to form a stable majority. Even if they pulled in the DUP, under this circumstance, you can see they'd be well short of the line, the magic line for a majority. We, uh, talk about 326, but of yep. course Sinn Féin don't take up their seats, it's, it's 321 and then of course there's the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker who don't vote, so it's below that number, but yeah. even, even so, that doesn't give them a majority. Yeah, that's right. So on these numbers, I mean, there aren't really other uh, credible potential partners for a Conservative-led government. So, yeah, the DUP are the other one they might well try and bring in. I mean, there's only one UKIP MP projected on these numbers, though whether uh, whether the Liberal Democrats would be willing to work with them is, is an interesting question, or even maybe in some parts the Conservative Party. So yes, on these numbers, um, certainly it would be difficult for David Cameron to put together a, a stable majority government. OK, and of course we must talk about this factor, the SNP, yes. who in their manifesto say they would work to keep a Conservative government out. So yes, so the SNP in this scenario... Yeah look like they have a huge amount of uh, leverage um, but they've been very clear that they would only work to uh, put a, a left uh, of centre Labour-led government in office and they mm. would vote down any Conservative Queen's So if you so, put those with the yeah, other left-leaning parties? They would most probably bring with them Plaid, Cymru, the Green, if we have one Green MP still, and probably the SDLP. And probably the, the SDLP as well. Most probably, yeah. yeah they're yeah. a kind of sister party of the Labour Party. Yeah. And you can so see that takes them over what the those. Conservatives had, which we've just shown you. Yes. But so what, what could we say about that? I mean, it's not a coalition, is it? Because uh, Labour have already ruled out this coalition, this formal coalition with the SNP. No. So, I mean, what we can see with that is it just about takes them over the line, as you said, take out the five Sinn Féin MPs. That's a bare, bare majority. But probably not enough to really provide stable government for five years. So they might well look to bring in the Liberal Democrats through some kind of Who would of go agreement. across because they would say to the Conservatives, you can't form a coalition that would hang together. Yes, and this might happen quite soon or it might actually happen after a, an initial Queen's speech um, from the Conservative side is voted down. So there's different ways that could play out. But yes, the numbers suggest that this might be the way we get to significantly above that line um, and, and a sort of governing mm. majority. But, it, but, in, but yeah. um, yes, as you said, I mean, Labour and the SNP have both really ruled out a working together in coalition. We're not going to see Alex Salmond or Angus Robertson sitting around the cabinet table with, with Ed Miliband. So they would remain actually an opposition party, mm. though maybe supporting from the outside. Most probably so would the SDLP and the Greens and Plaid, um, they might have some kind of formalised agreement, but I would be very surprised to see them in the Cabinet. So then we may end up with a, uh, a minority coalition of these two parties, um, which would be far short of... Is that unprecedented? I mean, um, you've got a, a Labour Party on 269, less seats than the Conservatives, they might be quite animated about that. They might indeed. I mean, the, the, the key thing in constitutional terms is not which party has the greatest number of seats. It's simply which person or which party leader is best placed to command a majority okay. of the House as, as a whole. That's hmm. the policy. Do you think they would try and tie test. in the Liberal Democrats in a cabinet? Well, given that under this scenario here, they would be 
Uh, yeah, I mean, Labour Party would be smaller than the Conservatives. I think it's fairly likely that they might try to do some kind of deal with, with the Liberal Democrats. Whether that would involve formal coalition or not is hard to say at this stage. I mean, the Liberal Democrats might again end up um, even if they're significantly smaller than they were in 2010, they might end up being in that pivotal position of being able to do With half the mandate. Potentially so. So they might have enough negotiating power to get back into Cabinet, yes. Something which is also unprecedented is this. Um, it's the Fixed Term Parliament Act, brought in in 2011 to keep the coalition together. It changes the rules substantially. It does indeed, yes. It doesn't really change the rules around forming a government, but it changes the rules around when you can have a second election. And yes, indeed, there are two ways around this uh, five-year fixed term. Uh, one of them is a fairly high bar, actually. You need two-thirds of all members of the House to vote explicitly for an early decision. So all 650? Yes, indeed. So on those numbers, that really means only if the Labour and Conservative parties agree could you go down that route to have an early dissolution. But the alternative way it could happen is if a government loses a confidence vote um, in the House and then nobody else is able to form a government within 14 days. And the interesting thing about this is up until we had this Fixed Term Parliament Act on the statute book, um, the leader of a minority government always had the option in his or her back pocket to go to the palace if the going got tough and if they saw a chance to win a majority at a subsequent election and ask for an early dissolution. That's what Howard Wilson did in 1974. That's no longer the case. Um, and a government that lost a motion of no confidence would run the risk that the other, the other main party would come to power instead without needing another election. So you could have a scenario under the figures that we were looking at before where Labour put together their coalition and for argument's sake, it might not happen, but for argument's sake one or two or a number of these parties pull the rug from mm. under Labour because they don't like something that's happening. Um, under that circumstance suddenly the Conservatives, the door opens to the Conservatives even though you've got this SNP factor. Well, the Conservatives in that scenario would have another chance, just as they'll have a chance after May the 7th, to try and put together some kind of, uh, some kind of arrangement with other parties to, to, to govern. But if in this situation Labour and the SNP stuck and, and the other smaller parties remained adamant that they would vote down the formation of a Conservative government, um, then it might still be impossible for the Conservatives to come back to power and then we would have an, another election. Mm. So you would, might have a scenario where the Conservatives, if there is a vote of no confidence in a Labour government, the Conservatives say, we dare you, we now dare you to vote down our legislation. But it, it becomes very, very messy, doesn't it? It could potentially become quite messy, yes. And a lot of it might just come down to, do the parties themselves have uh, appetite and indeed funds for an early uh, election and you know do they think the voters will be suffering from severe um, election fatigue by that case by that point just want to finish with this final thought if you put another five or six seats on either the Liberal Democrats or the Conservatives mm. uh, the same works the other way by yeah. the way but but if you did that uh, suddenly they get very close to the line which really does make the point that this is a very tight vote and it could come down to a handful of constituencies Yes, absolutely. Um, on these scenarios, yeah, a few more Conservatives and Lib Dems um, elected on May the 7th and we might have another deal between Cameron and Clegg, um, who knows. But I mean, one thing it would be important, I think, to remember is, um, I mean, the last five years have, have shown that um, David Cameron in particular can't necessarily count on the, um, con the, 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 the loyal support at all times of his backbenchers. Um, on issues like Europe in particular and other things. So if you ended up with a, a coalition of the same parties that's only narrowly above the threshold for a majority, um, it could still be quite difficult um, to, to govern in that context. Okay. And it might end up working quite similarly to a minority government. Well, Akash, thanks very much for coming in and talking us through that. Lots of different scenarios uh, with... Uh 
just over two weeks uh, still to go. It will come down to a handful of constituents, maybe even a hundred or so votes in, in some of these constituencies. So everything to fight for and lots to campaign for in the days ahead.